Thank you. As a Palestinian Australian, we have watched our families um, be slaughtered, our communities decimated, and our people dehumanised. Our government has been complicit in Israel's genocide. And there have been 21 weeks worth of sustained protests and actions across this nation. Australians have come out, tens of thousands of them, time and again, saying they do not want to be complicit in Israel's war crimes and genocide. <laughs> is, it not, is it not about time that the government and the opposition party call for a permanent ceasefire and end the illegal <coughs> occupation. And also, to add, hold them to account for their war crimes. All right. Okay. I want to bring in Nathan. Nathan Thrall, who has written extensively about these issues and lives in Jerusalem. I mean, you've heard that question, and very thank you, very emotional question too, about the sustained calls for a permanent ceasefire. People are doing this around the world, not just in Australia. Is the world listening? No, the, the world isn't listening. Um, there absolutely needs to be an immediate ceasefire, and uh, the um, US and its allies are absolutely complicit in uh, what is happening in Gaza right now. And uh, there is no excuse because this war uh, is going to end at some point, and it's going to end with uh, Hamas not defeated. Hamas isn't going to be eliminated. So this war is going to end with Hamas still in place. And the only difference between a ceasefire now and a ceasefire later is uh, thousands of women and children killed, and uh, who knows how many Israeli hostages killed. So absolutely, uh, the US and its allies are 100% complicit in what's happening. Dr. Rifi, there is currently a negotiation around a ceasefire. Um, as we speak, obviously, there is no deal yet. The US president had suggested it was close. We're not quite there yet, although some positive reporting tonight, although we've learnt not to, not to make any declarations before that's all sealed. Do you feel like the government, the opposition, are listening to the calls? Without any doubt, uh, our government capacity to do anything about the macro-political level in the Middle East is very limited, it's very small. I think we've heard the Vice President of USA is making the call today about an immediate ceasefire, and that is of significance. Except we are talking about Netanyahu and his far-right government. And Netanyahu has actually all lived all his life against two-state solution and he wanted this war to keep on going because that's the only way he can protect himself and he, on, he only interested in protecting himself. Unfortunately, he's not working for the nation of Israel and at the same time, he is not counting how many people, kids, women, are be, being dead and immediate ceasefire has to be called and be called immediately for our leaders. To be honest, I think actually if they call to ceasefire or they haven't called to ceasefire, does not make much difference, except what they need to be calling upon is actually clear messaging about how we in Australia should prevent this war coming into our shore and how we can disagree better in Australia. Mm. We will get to that theme because it is a really important one. But Katie Gallagher, you heard May's question. Mm. She's asking a question about a permanent ceasefire, clearly. And I'm going to speak. I'd love to hear again from you in a moment, May. But, you know, the government has been incrementally moving in that direction, but you're not calling for a permanent ceasefire. Well, I think um, it was probably a couple of months ago now we called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire um, that... Um, uh, you know, that that had to happen on both sides uh, because we still have the case of um, hostages being held and obviously the, the harrowing scenes that we're all watching um, from the Middle East and in Gaza in particular. Um, we've been working with Canada and, and New Zealand uh, and issuing 
um, you know, strong statements and, you know, we have to, I be, think, be realistic about the, the amount of influence and voice we have, uh, but where we can use it, we should use it. Um, I was at the G20 meeting last week of foreign ministers. Obviously, the situation in the Middle East was one of those um, topics that every country was raising, wanting to see a solution, uh, wanting to see, you know, a way through, a pathway to peace. Um, we've got to provide more humanitarian assistance. We've got some of that uh, flowing at, at the moment, the, the money that uh, Senator Wong has, has increased. Uh, and we have to be realistic about a two-state solution. Um, you know, we have to be working with um, allies, but any country that wants to work, that wants to see an end to the, the war in the Middle East and an end to the suffering. Uh, but I think certainly on a ceasefire, we, we were there a couple of months ago um, calling for that so that we can actually get humanitarian assistance in uh, okay. and also have those discussions, particularly led by the US, yeah. into a pathway to peace. May that uh, Dr uh, um, Jamal Rifi mentioned the fact that Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the US today, has actually um, made some very strong comments. Clearly the Australian Government says they've been calling for a ceasefire. Is that good enough? No, it's not. What's not good enough about it? Because it's, it's politi they're politicking. Israel has been charged to be um, an apartheid regime. It has been, Ill yes, by international organisations, including Amnesty International. Yeah, it's since been accused of that, yes. that's right. It has now been pulled in, in front of the ICJ, um, basically clearly stating that it is... Um, it needs to make sure that there is aid flowing into Gaza, that it needs to not commit genocide, and it is actively has, has a policy of limiting aid going into Gaza, and what we're seeing right now are people starving to death. We lit literally what not more a few can days the, ago... What more can our government do, Our though? government can do a lot. Our government can impose... Um, <clears throat> Uh, ministerial sanctions. It could, uh, sorry, sanctions. Um, it can recall ambassadors. Um, it can say to um, Israel, "What you're committing is a war crime, and we don't support this. We have a we have a human rights obligation. Um, we can continue funding UNRWA. There are so many things our government can actually do. To say that you've called for a humanitarian pause doesn't mean you've called no, for a permanent ceasefire. It means a pause, let's get some aid but, in, no, we've said and people ceasefire. can still... We haven't said pause, and we are funding UNRWA. There is a review going in at the moment, but we have significantly increased funding to really UNRWA um, to make sure that it, you know we are doing what we can, and Senator Wong has flagged more assistance in coming days. Um, we have had... Uh, the ambassador has been spoken to, the Israeli ambassador, about some of the concerns um, in terms of the um, situation in Gaza. So that, that has been happening. Um, I think, you know, for us, there's, there has been a lot of... Well, perhaps, because this is raised quite rightly, you know, um, you know, the protests you talk about and the sort of community disharmony that we're seeing in Australia. I mean, part of our job is to make sure that what is happening and what we are doing is being understood because there has been a level, I think, of either misunderstanding or misreporting. Okay, so you're saying you're calling for a permanent ceasefire? We've called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. We've called for, for um, <laughs> negotiations with all the parties on a pathway to peace mm -hmm. and in recognition that we believe that and do you um, think a pathway the Netanyahu to peace government includes is going a two-state solution. Do you think this is We have said that Israel should follow international law and, and, and how, how Israel responds matters. And, and we have also they, said do not... following go, international law? We have also said, well... Um, we have also said, sorry, I'll just finish this, that um, how they respond uh, matters and that we have <laughs> asked, particularly on their um, escalation into Rafa, that do not go down this path. I mean, that is the language we have been using um, and using in the last month or so. I used it last week okay. at the G20 meeting. So I think the language Na there is I just is want to bring strong. in Nathan, who lives here and has written extensively on it. Um, the US is using strong language now. Is the Netanyahu government listening? No, and, and, and it's false also to say that the US is really exerting any pressure on Israel. Uh, that this is... their, their language has changed. OK, but they have actual leverage that they're not using. And uh, these are US bombs that are being used in Gaza, and uh, the US could stop this war very quickly, and it's not. I just want to touch on a couple of things that were said. 
One on the question of uh, apartheid. This was a finding of uh, a UN United Nations Special Rapporteur, mm -hmm. the leading human rights organizations in the world, Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, leading uh, Palestinian human rights organizations like Al Haq, and leading Israeli uh, human rights organizations like B'Tselem, and also former senior government officials of Israel, including former ministers and the leading uh, legal authority of former Attorney General of Israel. So. Um, this is not a uh, controversial finding. This is something that has reached a point of uh, near consensus in the international human rights uh, community. Um, secondly, when the uh, ICJ was just looking, following the genocide case, they looked at uh, the question of the legality of Israel's prolonged more than half century long occupation just now, and over 20 nation states f found that Israel is practicing apartheid in their filings to the ICJ. So this is uh, reaching a consensus, and, um, and it, it, it's not a controversial position. I also want to touch on what uh, Mai had said about uh, a ceasefire uh, not being sufficient. And the reason a ceasefire isn't sufficient is because it's not addressing the root problem. All the time we have these wars in Gaza and the world says, let's restore calm. It's terrible, there's an uprising in the West Bank, there's uh, violence, there's a war in Gaza, let's restore calm. What is the calm that we're asking to be restored? It's a system in which Israel is a sole sovereign between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, with seven million Jews and seven million Palestinians, and the vast majority of those Palestinians do not have basic civil rights. Now, that is a system of gross injustice. It's lasted for more than half a century. And you live, and you the live US, in that system. The US and its allies are supporting the system. They're vetoing UN Security Council resolutions. They're uh, withholding any kind of accountability. There are no consequences. So, of course, Israel chooses to perpetuate the system. It is much better for them. If the choices are, continue as it is and the world will wag its finger, or you give the Palestinians citizenship or sovereignty, they choose the first. You live there, right? And, yes. and you've, you know, you've been speaking about these issues. What, what, what's so uncomfortable about you in that experience. Just talk to me about your experience because you do have rights in that system. Why does that nag at you? Well, I, I think it would nag at any, you know, Australian who lived in that system, anybody who comes from a democratic country. But it doesn't nag at uh, everyone, does it? Well, it, it doesn't nag at uh, many, many Israelis um, because they're in the privileged class, and they are not discriminated against based on their inborn characteristics. But all of us who live in democratic societies believe that there should not be special rights granted or withheld from people on the basis of their inborn characteristics. Mm. It's very simple. Yep. Sorry, take care. Yep. This is the problem. Decent people recoiled in horror at the attack on the 7th of October. And decent people want this conflict to end on all sides. But when we move this conversation to what has just occurred, which is questioning the entire existence of Israel, and, and that's what we're being asked here to talk about, then that's not a constructive path to peace. Right now, there's a potential negotiation in Cairo. And anyone who wants to actually have this end in a negotiated outcome would want Hamas and Israel to come to that in good faith. A simple request was made of Hamas to provide particulars of the hostages who are still kept by a terrorist state, and they refused to provide those particulars of the hostages. <laughs> if you want this war to end, and I do, those hostages have to come home. They have to come home. <laughs>